Hi, how's it going, everybody? And welcome to the Debutify podcast, the premier e-commerce podcast brought to you by Debutify. I'm your host, Alex Bond, and joining me today is Omar Ali, the founder of ROA Recipe. Omar has been in the e-commerce and dropshipping industry since 2018, and since then, he's been through the process of building a brand more than 100 times. While he admits that he's made a lot of mistakes along the way, it's allowed him to discover what works and what doesn't. On today's episode, we talk about dropshipping techniques, researching products, dropshipping versus Amazon FBA, and much more more. Here's our interview now. Omar, welcome to the show. Thanks, Evan. Yeah, how are you doing, man? All good. All good. What about you? Great. Great. Phenomenal. It is uh, sunny here in Richmond, Virginia. Where, where are you reporting live from? I'm Dubai. Dubai. Awesome. Well, we're happy to have you on the show. Um, why don't we start off with your company? Can you give us a little background on ROA Recipe for us? Yeah, basically, ROA Recipe is something in the a concept that I had in mind. I started alone. Uh, basically, it, it is only uh, an agency that helps people with e-commerce, dropshipping, or in general uh, with e-commerce and digital marketing. Uh, it's more specific to e-commerce, but we do other things as well related to uh, digital marketing, but solely focused on e-commerce, providing solutions to things that we see that the audiences are struggling with, uh, whether it's uh, web design, ads, ads management, and video editing and other stuff that basically trying to make their life easier Mm -hmm. when starting an e-commerce business. So talking about those services that you provide, can we dive into that a little bit? You mentioned video editing, media buying. What what are in totality all the services that ROA Recipe provides for a client, can provide for a client? Yeah. So it started out only doing web design. We would design uh, custom buy stores whether it's for uh, brands or startups, dropshipping stores, all kinds of uh, Shopify stores, we would handle that. And then we sort of expanded. Uh, When we got good experience in media buying, for example, with Facebook ads, TikTok ads, and even uh, Google ads right now, we've been uh, developing that experience. And now we can also help other e-commerce brands uh, with such services when it comes to media buying. And we also have video editing. It's not like our specialty, but we do have someone in-house that can handle that as well. So basically, we try to cover all areas of e-commerce. We know that people uh, might struggle with web design or actually launching their ads and managing the ads. And sometimes also uh, they just need a a quick video ad for the product. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So with your your clientele um, and the services you provide... Are your clients typically entrepreneurs who are kind of just starting out in the e-commerce space and require maybe a little hand-holding in the process? Or are your clients more um, paying you for your services simply because they might not have the time to put all the legwork in themselves? Yeah, it can be a mix of both because there are people who can do the stuff, but they simply don't have the time or they just want to allocate that service to someone who already is confident with it. And so they can focus on other areas of their business. That's mm-hmm. also one scenario or one type of client that we uh, work with. But yeah, most of the time it would be someone who is trying to enter to the e-commerce space, uh, but not very confident with all of these areas. So maybe uh, he can really design a good website, but he's missing the media buying part. So he would come to us and uh, we'll manage it for him. No, that's great. So it's a little combination of both is what I'm hearing you say. How do you conduct your research in determining what products to add to a drop shipping store? Yeah. So first of all, we have criteria in mind before even looking at digging into product research. We want to have a product that either solves a problem or adds like has a good perceived value, right? Uh, So not everything will be solving a problem. Some products is just a value addition to the customer, so things like Home Depot and stuff. And we all we always have in mind the profit margins because we're, we're aiming for media buying and paid ads. So you want to have a bit of a margin to work with for the marketing. And then we always do the strategy of reverse engineering what is already working. So we're get, we can use all sorts of uh, ad spy tools to see what's working right now. Maybe get some ideas, not necessarily just take the exact product. For example, I've seen uh, one leggings that is popping off this winter right and i took the idea and then i found a similar product that does the same job but with a completely different design and no not no one is selling it but there's a lot less competition with that variant so taking the idea and just finding something that can be 
unique, differentiate you from the competition as well. Because that's that's something else that you've mentioned in some of your videos online. Can can you actually build on that a little bit? Like, you know, for example, you've pretty much said that it has become an extremely competitive space. How has turning a profit in drop shipping become more difficult over the past few years? Yeah, I mean, the, the very, very obvious evidence when you uh, search it up in Google Trends, you see the trend is at its peak or just going up all the time right now. And people are very aware about drop shipping. And so many people that are new to the space are just copying products and just trying to uh, get th- something working but they just copy a product that is already saturated. So it's very mm-hmm. difficult to see success. That's that's when really product research comes into play and uh, trying to differentiate yourself. Even if you're selling the same product, I would try to tackle it with a different marketing angle as a solution for, to a different problem, to a different demographic. But don't just take the whole thing as it is and try to compete. It's never going to work. Yeah, they they say that's kind of the definition of insanity is trying the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. So let's say I open up a drop shipping store. You know, my website looks good. I'm I'm proud of the product. You did great research for me, Omar. I'm, I'm, I'm about to put out a product that I'm really looking forward to. In your opinion, how do I properly market my store in the best way to ensure that people will actually come and use it? Okay. So first of all, I would ask, what kind of store are you working with? Is it a general store? Is it a niche specific? Or is it just selling one type of product? Um, yeah, because, we'll we'll yeah. say it's selling one type of product, just for right now. Yeah, one type of product. Then the best thing you can do is, if you've done your research right and the product is good, then you will run the ads and let the results and get actual analytics and feedback from the market. Because that's the... The only way that you can find a winning product is when you test it. People tell you, like, I'll give you a winning product. Yes, we can give you the highest chance of having a winner, but it's not guaranteed, of course, unless you run the ads and see the results, see how people are interacting with the product. And maybe there's something wrong we can fix, but if there's nothing going on at all, then it's just the product and should probably try something different. But if there is a lot of clicks, for example, people are going into your website and they're not adding to cart, maybe we can look at something at the offer and the pricing, providing more trust in the website. Okay. Mm-hmm. If, if people are adding to cart, but they're not checking out, then we look at the next step in the funnel and so on until we get thing, things going. But if people are not adding to cart, not doing any, taking any action on your website, then probably it's just a bad. Then you'll mm-hmm. have to move to another product. I mean, that's the name of the game. It's, it's never stable. You can never uh, just stay selling one product forever unless you brand it. What what sort of products have you found the best success with personally? I, I generally ask a, a lot of our guests the, this question in different ways, yeah. and, and people generally have different answers. Yeah, honestly, it's the problem solving. It's the easiest to sell because you can sort of play on emotions. And good thing if it's if it's aligning with a season, for example, if it's a Christmas season, it's a winter season, and you find a specific a solution to a problem during winter, whether it's something that keeps them warm, whether it's clothes, it's some gadgets at home, some ice scraper for the cars, something. Mm-hmm. So some of these products were extremely, I mean, they performed extremely well with us. No, oh, that's great. So what 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 are some of the other bigger problems that entrepreneurs run into when starting off in drop shipping? Honestly, the bad advice uh, make everyone wants to start drop shipping as an an easy way to uh, get into business and start printing money as they say, but uh, mm-hmm. unfortunately it's not as easy as it used to be. Mm-hmm. I, I used to do that in 2017 where literally I'll just see any product and list it on a website, run some decent ads, and you'll get some sales. You'll get something going on. But now people are very aware of what dropshipping is, what a sketchy website looks like, what, you know, and, and there's more competition than ever. So it's not as easy as it used to be. Again, I repeat myself, but that's really the, the point here. So, how did how did you first get into the industry? Like, how did you know what, to, you know, what was a scam? What wasn't? How did how did yeah. you personally go through that experience? And, and what's your sure, journey sure. like? Yeah, yeah, I'm sure you heard of the name Ecom King. That was my motivation. I've been following him for at least four years now, following his journey. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, he was always a big inspiration. One of the few people that you can actually 
take their word for everything that they say, that they practice what they uh, teach, and like very, very open when he, he teach the stuff. So that's what really uh, motivated me and uh, show me what's possible with it. So I, I started it as, as just a side hustle, right? I was working as chemical engineer full time in Dubai. So I used to save up, say, $1,000 every month just to try things out. I don't even expect it to work. I was just building websites, trying some ads. And most of them fail unless uh, until the uh, last product I did is was in Christmas time. It was that uh, popular smart uh, LED Christmas light that you can control with your mobile. That was my f- first ever win- winning product. We did decent numbers. I did like a 10,000. And at that time, that number was like huge after just losing money, losing money. Of course, that's 10,000 in revenue. It's not all profit, but... It was an achievement. It made me believe like you can really actually build something out of this. How many how many products did it take before you found that winning one? That was really a lot, like probably like 20 something. Wow. And I, I never gave up because I, I was just doing it to try something new. Mm-hmm. And I didn't have the expectations that it would work out tomorrow. I was just trying and trying. And it was the first experience. So probably I was making a lot of mistakes. But, you know, that's how you learn when you make mistakes, of course. Mm-hmm. No, absolutely. And, and it actually brings into the into the question of, you know, with, with four years experience in this industry, why did you end up deciding to start ROA Recipe instead of continuing to own and operate your own stores? Yeah, we, we do run stores as well as my two clothing brands. I have a clothing brand in Dubai and in my home country, Egypt right now. And they're fully cool. developed working on them for the past two years and a half. And bringing in automated revenue, basically everything is working uh, nicely. And then we also s- still doing drop shipping as well as the RO recipe, helping people with that experience that we gained over this four years. No, that's great. So one of the other things that I I appreciate your frankness or your honesty in your Instagram and YouTube videos. It, it feels pretty upfront to me. Um, and you've stated in these videos that you're much more inclined to use drop shipping than FBA or fulfillment by Amazon. Why is that? Yeah, basically I was also a seller, not an expert, but I was a seller once on in, in Amazon and it felt like I don't own my business while I was doing everything. I was having the stock, trying to get people to buy my products initially, running ads, trying to push my product up the Amazon pages. Because, you know, when you list the product, it's like in page 30, you know, no one ever sees it. Yeah. And I found out after doing some good numbers in Dubai, uh, in Amazon, um, they were taking a big chunk of my profit. And so I remember in some items, they take up to 18%, 20%. I don't remember anymore, but pretty big percentages out of your money. Mm-hmm. That's number one. Um, they can easily disable your account for any reason. And you have nowhere to complain, of course. That's another reason. Third thing is that you don't really own your business. You don't have access to your customers. They are the one that they're growing their platform and you do, you do the selling and everything. You do that. So why not do the same thing, but build your own brand, build your name, build your customer list, your database. So you can do a lot of stuff with this data. You can do email marketing. You can do retargeting. You can do local like audiences. You're actually building an asset that you can use and you can actually exit and, and sell it for decent money as well. And you're actually creating like a brand identity at the same time too, you yeah. know, that that like Omar's brand is being able to be translated and understood a little more efficiently than you know, hiding behind Amazon's brand identity a little bit. So I can, I can totally understand what you're saying. So let's, let's, let's pivot and talk about these clothing lines. I I think that's pretty cool. So are are those more a passion project of yours? I mean, obviously the goal of anything in terms of creating a product is to turn a revenue, uh, obviously, but um, can you tell us a little bit, bit about that? Is that more of a a passion thing or is that been a conscientious choice that you made to go into the clothing space well it's well let's say it's, it's uh, more of opportunity you found in front of your eye mm-hmm. and it actually like it was similar to drop shipping very similar because i i met a friend that works in turkey right and he has a lot of connections in turkey and a lot of clothing uh, manufacturers and suppliers mm-hmm. so it started off basically like drop shipping we would list the items from their catalogs. It's not from AliExpress anymore, but 
from actual suppliers that manufacture the cloth in uh, Turkey. We would list the items on the uh, website. And then whenever there is an order, we would buy it, ship it to Dubai, and then deliver it to the customer. It would take roughly like seven to 10 days to deliver. It was decent delivery time. And it started off like this. We kept expanding, adding more catalogs and more catalogs. And finally, we have our own line, as well as the still doing the same method, taking some items from here and there and building that brand with our own name now. No, that's great. How do you expect that to grow in the next five years? Yeah, honestly, it's progressing pretty well. We started to expand our markets. We used to focus only on Dubai, but now we're shipping into other Gulf countries or Gulf countries, the East countries Mm -hmm. like Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Oman, Bahrain, Kuwait. And uh, we're thinking to start to explore Europe countries as well. But for now, we're, we're doing uh, like we're shipping to like seven countries right now. We already managed to get some good contracts in terms of shipping. So that started to give us a good opportunity to expand more rather than just focusing on Dubai. And it's growing, slowly growing, but steady. And that's what I like. I, I don't want to just build a million dollar business in a one day and then it falls apart. I wanted something to grow, keep growing with me. And uh, yeah, something I, I'm I'm happy to uh, work on. I can use all my experience, everything that I've been through to grow as well. And apart from this brand, I did another one in Egypt, in my home country. Right, That also was through connections in Egypt. We were manufacturing our own clothes directly in uh, locally with Egyptian cotton. And then we started with very few pieces just to test what's going to happen it's very simple like track suits with some text and stuff like that and then we we tried out the designs people started to like them then we we brought in a different collection and it keeps going and building from there no that's great i i I love to hear that and the fact that you got a couple going on at the same time means that you can kind of trial run an idea on this one before you execute it on this one and vice versa you can kind of you know, yeah. go back and forth on what's working and what's not and and uh, beta test things, you know. So you're, you're also a content creator in terms of Instagram, YouTube, TikTok. That seems to be something that you're pretty passionate about. What what yeah. What is your goal in the content creation? Is that educating the public? Is it a passion of yours? Is it a way to promote ROA recipe? What are your goals with that? Yeah, to be honest, like it started out like a trial. Mm -hmm. I started posting probably in in, like about one and a half years ago, not not very old, but just trying things out. And then people, I started getting some good feedback from people like, you really explain things in a nice way. And especially beginners, like they were saying, like you're explaining everything in in simple terms and they enjoy it. And I found something that I enjoy as well, creating that and getting that feedback, maybe helping uh, some people here and there struggling with things that I talk about, uh, share my experience while I was doing it as well. That also, like when you teach something, you become even more good at it because you're just also teaching it at the same time. So, and it, it feels just it feels good when you uh, post something and other people find it useful. At the same time, it's very a uh, good uh, time to grow a personal brand, especially in this time. It's always good. Whatever you want to do, it's it's always like. If you have attention, you can grow any business, basically. So it's kind of work all together. Uh, I enjoy it, posting content every day. I don't get bored uh, doing that. And uh, yeah, it's doing well as well. I'm not uh, growing super fast, but also slow and steady, which is, which is good. Well, there's something to be said for the consistency a little bit, too. You know, I mean, you seem to post pretty regularly. I think there's a lot of value in that, especially when it comes to hitting in the algorithm and and the like. So, so what's next for you? Is it is it growing all your brands, growing growing your two clothing companies, trying to grow in the content creation space? Do you have any new projects on the horizon? It's not kind of like a new product. It's the same thing. Our recipe and one agency in Egypt, which is owned by my friend, my very close friend in Egypt, and he's a digital marketing agency owner. So we kind of combine those ventures and trying to come up with a good solution for everyone in in Egypt as well in my home country. So that's something we've been working with as well right now, apart from uh, the other projects. And of course, yeah, the goal is always to grow connections, grow your uh, team and uh, get things growing, of course, in all directions. Yeah, absolutely. That sounds exciting. So, you know, before we wrap up, I always end the interview by asking 
people in the e-commerce space essentially don't have a lot of free time. So when they do, it probably needs to be used wisely on hobbies and interests to help retain a little san- sanity and, and mental health. So Omar, what do you do with your free time that isn't e-commerce related? I spend time with family. That's my number one priority. I like to go to the gym, but recently I've not been doing that because I am busy. <laughs> That's the problem. Or at least the excuse that I am. But family comes first to me. Family. Always, yes. always family. Definitely. Well, Omar, I, I really appreciate your time, my friend. Thanks for coming on the show. Anything else you'd like to plug before we head out? No, well, that's all. Thank you for inviting me to this podcast. And it's a really good opportunity talking with you. Absolutely. We'll talk again in the future. Maybe we'll do a check-in in like a, a, a year or two. For sure. For sure. Let's do that. All right. Have a good one, my friend. You too. I'd like to thank my guest, Omar Ali, for joining me on the show and tune in next week when I sit down with Jim Huffman, the CEO of a growth marketing consultancy called Growth Hit. Jim and I will talk about web design, setting realistic goals, growth consulting, and plenty more. For more information about Omar, you can connect with him on LinkedIn or follow him at Marketing Omar on TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube. To learn more about ROA Recipe, you can visit their website, roarecipe.com. That's our show. Thanks for joining us, and we hope you come back to find new episodes being published every Tuesday. Until then.